<laughs> We're all looking to you. <laughs> oh, great. Um, this Fearless is always, leader. It's always very stressful because we never know what to do and uh, it's always a good chance it's not going to work. It, it really shouldn't work, the things we get away with. Well, maybe, maybe we could preface, has anyone done anything social engineering wise on the telephone recently? Gotten information they weren't supposed to get? Uh, gotten people to help them out? I mean, it's, you always, if you win somebody's sympathy over, they'll tell you all kinds of bits of information. I was, I was listening to something we did at Beyond Hope where we called a blockbuster video and we were just talking to a representative there and I played the part of an angry husband who had, who had gotten really upset at the fact that he had just come home from a holiday and there was this, um, this late fee waiting for him and I, I didn't know who was using the card. I, I need to know all the people who are using my card. Well, except the thing is, I don't really know what last name was being used. So I wanted to try this one. All right, it's not that, you know, and we basically just went through all these names and the poor receptionist or um, uh, person at the, at the uh, front desk uh, was just giving me everybody's information, addresses, names, videos that they were renting, it, all because I was exasperated, trying to help me out so that I could fix the situation, because I was trying to help them out, I was trying to pay this late fee, which really didn't exist. But it was an indication of how easy it is to get somebody to tell you something they really shouldn't tell you. Another time we called a Starbucks, and uh, we asked them if they were having trouble with their cash register, which of course they were, and uh, we got them to sort of read off the last few transactions because we were afraid it wouldn't go through. And they started reading out credit card numbers. We, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty, uh, we're, we're responsible people here, so we lowered the volume. That didn't get out. We interrupted her. But yeah, people can give out all sorts of information. And you know what? I bet a lot of you give out information you're not supposed to give out. Your social security number. You probably have given that to the phone company when you don't have to. Or anyone else who asks for it. You know, we were thinking of asking for it ourselves and see how many of you fell for that, but we didn't. Uh, it's, um, it's amazing. As social networking, people just give out all this information about themselves and that is, that's a boon to anybody who wants to, uh, to find out information they're not supposed to have access to. People put their class schedules online, uh, they have all their, their favorite likes and dislikes and secret desires and things like that. They post them because they want to share it with other people who might feel the same way, but it's really, it's really getting all kinds of information out there that um, added together, it's your life, you know, it's like having a diary always readable by anybody. How many of you have Facebook accounts on this panel? I do. All about me. <laughs> All right, so we're still all looking to me. Nobody has any other stories. Well, I have a story. That's Go ahead. Tell the story. By, I'll, uh, I'll make a call. I will. But, by uh, your Starbucks story. Go ahead. Another large corporation, I uh, decided to test their security and I called up one of their stores as a very thankful customer and asked for the manager and fortunately he was, he was out so the employee was more than grateful to give me their home address so I can send them a bouquet of flowers to show how grateful I am for their, their service. So I immediately called up another store in a different town and said, hey, I'm the manager from store A. We're having a lot of problems with our credit card machines. We got a customer here who said he was there yesterday. Can you read off his credit card number? Guess what they did? Read it off in full. Of course, I was, you know, nice and I explained to him exactly what I did and how to stop against it. And uh, they threatened to sue me. So. <laughs> All right, well, uh, no, I mean, you know, I, okay, I've got an example that, you know, everybody from Hope, you know, that's ever been here can appreciate. Um, back H2K2, when we had the, you know, credit card size badges with the little SIM cards on them, um, I was walking around New York, it's my first Hope conference, first time I'd ever been in New York. Aimlessly walking around, um, I saw a roped, roped off area, so, you know, I started walking up and there's a security guard kind of sleeping and he noticed me walk up. He jumped up real quick, like, huh, huh, and he said, oh, okay, you're cool. And he like grabbed his badge and I didn't realize what he was doing, but he was signaling to me that because I had a badge, I could get on the set of Good Morning America to watch the Counting Crows. So that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, that was really, I mean, you know, everybody can appreciate the Counting Crows aren't that great, but whatever, free concert, you know, New York City. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, how come none of you told me I forgot to introduce somebody on the panel? Kevin Mitnick is also here. You might have heard of him. I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin. He's so polite, he would have sat here the, the entire hour and not said a word to me. And, yeah. 
Just thought I was blending in. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back here at Hope. Yeah. And uh, Kevin will be giving a talk immediately after this uh, social engineering thing happens. Um, but uh, you've had some social engineering experience, I believe, in the past? Just a little bit. <laughs> I have one with the central office. It was in Hollywood. This was, I don't know, about 10, no, 15 years ago. No, about 20 years ago. It was the Hollywood central office in Los Angeles. And a friend of mine, um, a guy named Stephen Rhodes at the time, was also a phone freaker. And we decided we wanted to take a self-guided tour of the central office. So it was around 2.30 in the morning on a Saturday. And we had the door codes to all the different offices in Los Angeles. And we just let ourselves in and we're roaming around the Hollywood CO, and we're about on the third floor, and then all of a sudden, this big guy security guard approaches us and goes, excuse me, yeah, do you have any ID? And I, I go, sure, one moment, and I go into my pocket, and I said, oh, I must have left my uh, ID in the car, I'll, I'll go get it, I'll be right back. He goes, no, he goes, who's this guy? And I go, oh, he's just a friend of mine, and I want to take him on a tour, he's never seen a central office. He goes, at 2.30 in the morning? I said, yeah, we just got out of a movie, and my friend has always wanted to work for the phone company. And so I figured I'd just take him on a quick tour. And he goes, well, where do you work? I said, well, I work in the Cosmos Center in San Diego. He goes, who's your supervisor? And I told him the name of the supervisor. Incidentally, it was the correct name of the person in the San Diego Cosmos Center. And he goes, no, you, have to come, you guys have to come with us. So he escorts us to the elevator, and I know on the ninth floor is the switching control center. And that's where there's people up there because that office is manned. So you end up going, getting escorted up to the ninth floor. And there's about five or six people around. And uh, the security guard's telling him the story. I found these two guys roaming around our building. This guy doesn't have ID. Let's find out what's going on. So one of the other uh, supervisors, not a security guard, he goes, what's your supervisor's name? And I gave it to him. I said, well, listen, you can't wake her up. Because look, it's 2.30 in the morning. If you want, I'll go to my car. Well, go get my ID, and I'll be right back. Of course, I had no plans of coming back. So he says, no, we're calling your supervisor. So he picks up a book, uh, some sort of intercompany directory, and I'm thinking, well, they don't list home telephone numbers in there. But apparently, he had found some sort of notes or whatever listing the supervisor's home phone number. So he calls the supervisor, 2.30 in the morning, Saturday. He goes, listen, I found one of your employees, Steve, roaming around one of our offices. And he says he works for you. Uh-huh. Oh, you want to talk to him? Sure. So he hands me the phone, and I go, hey, Sally, how are you? I'm really sorry to, that you were woken up. And I, you know, I normally would never take a friend on a tour of a central office. And she's, as I'm speaking, she's, going, she's saying, who are you? Who are you? And I'm going, yeah, I, and by the way, Tuesday, well, definitely, we still have that meeting for that report, correct? And she goes, who are you? Who are you? But I'm pressing the phone to my ear so the other people in the room can hear what she's saying. He's only listening to my side of the conversation. And I'm like having a calm conversation with her. And I said, listen, okay, um, you know, I'm just going to take my friend around for about 15 more minutes and we'll leave and uh, I'll see you on Tuesday. And I, I, and I went over and I walked about, uh, it was like one or uh, about two steps, and I hung up the phone. And I go, are you satisfied? Thank <laughs> you.